Welcome Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube channel video. You're here with GBHL channel host, GBHL James. And GBHL Jamie. And it's week 31, speak for any questions. Week 31. And uh, this is the first time that we've seen each other. Since last week. Since last week. <laughs> but during that week... Yeah, you've had a shot. <laughs> during that week, we became... Ah. The biggest Lord of the Rings slash The Hobbit Strategy Battle Gaming channel on YouTube. Woohoo! I Go can on. hear the sounds of applause yeah. and the rupturous ru cheering. Now, of course, this is no sort of uh, knife in on the lovely Rob uh, from Chicago, who was the, the, the biggest YouTube channel, but we did set him as a, a bit of a marker. We like this guy. We set him as a marker. We were like, right, in a year, we want to be bigger. And uh, we've done it. So we'd like to say thank you, everybody, for to all you your support. To you guys, for all that support. So we're closing on 1,500. I think when we get to 1,500, we're still competition. Yeah. Okay. We've been going for a long time. It's because we've not got any money. <laughs> <laughs> we've got nothing left. That's it. I've got nothing left at the moment. Okay. Absolutely, like nothing. I got a, um, I got a, a phone call from the company that did the AstroTurf for the. Oh yeah. And I thought I'd paid for everything this month. Good. And they contacted me and they said, um, "Yeah, you, you, you paid your deposit, but we we need the outstanding balance. It's like eight hundred pounds." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, yeah, 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 yeah I'll, I'll pay that." I'll pay that. It's on its way. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to get stuck into this. Um, really nice to see you, Jamie, by the way. Thank you. I've missed him very much. I'm going to start off, and we've got Yam Cider. Yam Cider. I've never heard that name before. No, I'm not. Welcome to our channel. So, hello, I'm new to the hobby, and I've finally convinced a friend to start playing, and we'll be doing Battle Company soon. Yes. Battle Company is good. Massively recommend it. Uh, my question is, what do you think would be the best way to go to get new people playing at my local games workshop? Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. We said this before, haven't we? Yeah. Um, play scenarios. Take two forces with you that you know play well together. Uh, things that die easy. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe start. Just, you just said be maybe start yeah, without might. And oh yeah, if, if you're trying to teach someone the very basic of the game, you start without might and just have like a couple of battle companies is great for it. Yeah. Uh, we just have two very small war bands that hit hit against each other. You see how the game plays a little bit, then you start expanding it, including heroes that they like. And come to pick up one box of troops and a hero and build your force from there. And of course, refer them to our How to Play uh, the Hobbit Strategy Battle Gaming video, which is uh, nearly 10,000 views or something. Yeah, I think it's like 7,800 or so. Is it? It's a very, very popular video. So maybe it's it's the most popular video. It's the one where I think both of us are suffering heavily from a cold. <laughs> and we're proper red eyed. I just had my head chopped horribly. <laughs> It was, it was one of the most difficult things that we've had to film on the channel. Yeah. Like, the, by far, doing a tutorial was really hard. Especially for a game that you know, you, you've learned so... It, it was much harder for you, and it, it was hard for Jamie, because, of course, there are things that you've got to explain. You, you take for granted knowing, like, you, the, the wound chart is like, right, so you're strength four, I'm defense seven, I know that's a six. But yeah. how do I, how do you tell a new person? You must find this here. You I'll do this, this by looking through the chart. You looked, find this by doing this. I've not looked at this chart for four years. Um, so yeah, that's a good way. And maybe start up a little league and a regular meet. And maybe yeah. sort of get a little prize on the go. That'd be really good. Uh, Kamika's answered you, but take two armies with you so that someone interested in playing can use one of your armies. That's yeah. always a good thing to do. Um, and maybe try and get, well, maybe play another system with somebody else. So maybe there's some 40k players and so play their game. Yeah. Play it with them. Enjoy it with them. You know, see whether, you, whether you're interested in that or not. But give it a go and then maybe say, oh, do you know what? That was really, really good fun. You should try this. You'd really enjoy it. I've got a spare army. Just want to have a little game. doesn't take too long. And um, it's that's really funny, good right? It certainly is. It certainly is. So thank you very much, Yam Sider. What's the rule now that he's in our Q&A? Now that you've asked us a question, you need to ask us, and we've answered, you need to ask us another one next week. Yeah, hopefully we uh, our answers satisfied you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Ben Howard. Ben Howard, good day, boys. Thanks for the answer to my questions. We'd love to meet. But we'd love to see a bat rep for a uh, great company. Yeah, Cheers. We need binoculars to see. Yeah, the, the thing's really far away today. Um, I posted some pics on Facebook page of my fully painted great company army. Any thoughts or suggestions? I liked that. I saw them and they look really good. I haven't seen them. You not had a chance. But I'm sure that they're beautiful. Uh, he will do um, a. He posts pictures when he's got his almighty Rohan army done. Wow. Well, I'm going to check out your great company now because you, you're clearly doing what I did. Great company and then Rohan and Mr. Destiny for greatness. You're going to change the matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, you hand yeah. him <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing what you boys have cooking for content to keep up the great work. His question for today is tournament players and gamers. Do you feel that certain types of players play a certain type of race? When I've been playing, players who play dwarves are fun to play against, and players who take high elves are a bit ruder and meaner. Sorry, Jamie. Well, don't worry, I don't play high elves, I play wood elves. <laughs> it's a difference, alright? It's a really interesting observation. Uh, I would actually agree with you from the fun point of view with dwarves. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of fun players do take the dwarves. Yeah. I, think, I think definitely. Uh, what has your experience been at tournaments, and what was the worst sport you've ever played against, or cheesiest list? Cheers again from Land Down Under. And Jeremy Smith has asked, is this a power racist question? <laughs> <laughs> um, certain types of players going for certain factions. <clears throat> I'd agree with him about the dwarves being sort of fun players. And, yeah. you know, I guess if somebody's taking somebody like, something like Wood Elves, Wood Elves are quite competitive. It's quite a competitive list. So you might it might draw the more competitive types of players, yes. perhaps. And, of course, you have to play them a certain way, yeah. which isn't our sort of yeah let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just go have a go yeah it's, it's not that kind of not that kind of army mm -hmm. um, that's a really good observation I like that question yeah. that's good good question um, as for what has your actually been at tournaments the worst sport you've played against name and shame I can't think I think probably the worst sport was against um, back in the old grand tournaments I don't know the kid's name but it was, it was a young kid and I, I, I I'd beaten him basically. Quite of course. Beaten it earlier. Yeah. We beat but, kids all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, he got very sour about the game because he'd lost, as, as a, a young kid would, and just started to disregard things and throw his models around the table. And it just sort of, it was like, oh, well, can't, can the scenario just end now? Mm. Um, rather than me have to sit here and risk my models getting things thrown at them. Really? Is that bad? Yeah, he sort of spiced them out a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, that's no good. I've only I've only really had sort of one bad experience of playing. Most of you know what what that was. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go back through the videos, yeah. it was down at Titans last time. And just just some time issues <laughs> for everybody who's there. I think it's the first time that this in me sort of <laughs> what <laughs> Jim, what Jim, it's a game. <laughs> <laughs> Which wound me up even more. <laughs> um, so that that was right. in terms of cheesiest list. Um, cheesiest list. But probably, probably when, when I played against Charles's Harad Bowline, that was horrible. That's a pretty cheesy list. Yeah, I played against um, Charles's Harad Bowline, that's very cheesy. Damien's All Berserkers and Ferals is, for that army, it's cheesy. And I'd say it is cheesy. Yeah, so I suppose. Spamming the, the cheap uh, when the price deletes. Maybe, yeah. Uh, um, playing against Owen. Owen's list was. Oh, um, yeah. Well, Owen's list was quite cheesy. Bomber, Gandalf, Alfred, yeah. Lake Town, Spam. Yeah. With elves. And, you know, I know it's a, a five armies theme, but it was. That was quite cheesy. It's a very selective theme. Mm, that was quite a cheesy thing to play against. Yeah. If, you, if you look at it from the way it's constructed and how you explain that list. Yeah. That was tough. Tech playing against two wizards was really tough with... Um, I wouldn't say it's cheesy though, taking two wizards. No. That's fine. Yeah, next question? Yeah, next question. Next up we've got Mason O'Neill. He's put, hey guys, sorry I missed the question last week. No problem <laughs> at all. He's put, do you think they'll make a profile for Dane at the Battle of the Five Armies? I hope so. Yeah, they should do. Uh, I'd like to see one of the greatest kings in the history of Middle-earth have a higher fight than a yeah. random dwarf captain. Agree? Yeah. It doesn't make sense for Dane to have a lower fight value than Barley, or even a random dwarf king profile. And also, do you think he'll be riding a boar? Well, no, those are the rumours. That's the rumours there, right, isn't it? Those are the rumours. Um, and yeah, Dane does need a higher fight value. Then the whole thing needs restructuring, so... Yeah, he's, he's an old profile, isn't it? Very, well, yeah. He's quite an old profile. He's an old man. Well, it's showing Dane at his sort of the very twi in his twilight years. Mm-hmm. Is it, that's why he's got the old... The, the I think what will be interesting would be whether the boar will be more like a wog than a horse or whether it's oh, more yeah, like yeah. a horse than a wog. It should be a should be wog, surely. It's got a natural killer instinct, doesn't it? Why am I brain? I don't know who that But they can do one. Probably something work-related. Next up, what the chick has shared, and then we've got <coughs> Ginger360. Hi lads, thanks as always. I'm sorry James, I have to agree with Jamie. Nine kisses is far too many. 
If I sent my Mrs. Lancaster in a text, you would think I was having an affair. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely creeping up, wasn't I? Um, I might not be able to ask a question next week as she is showing early signs of labour, so oh. I might have to have my hands full with a new baby boy, so wish me luck. Good luck. Best of luck, Ginger360. If it's a slow labour, I may take some models that need painting to the hospital just to pass the time. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Oh, it's, it's risky. I'd do that. Um, question. Do the Morgan Knights need a captain? And if so, can the Witch King or any other ringwraith be used? Thanks as always, Richard. Yes, they do need a captain. They're troops. Um, and a ringwraith can lead them. So, yes, the Witch King or any other ringwraith can lead them. Yeah, but you, you can't use them as a captain. When do Morgan Knights don't have a captain? No. No, no it's like, a Black Numenor and Marshal. Black, Black Numenor and Marshal, yeah. Which you could. He he's, use he's, he's, he's just got a sword, he's not got a lance, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think that might be actually be in the kit. It is. It is. It is, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's having got the kit myself. Next up we've got XTS Warzone. So, got, hi guys, two questions this week. One, Jamie, after watching the season finale of Vikings, can I help but ask your opinion? What do you think? For me, it was sort of painful to watch when Rolo, Roloff, can't remember, Rolo. agrees to fight against Ragnar. You need to watch season two then, because that's the end of season one. Oh, and I've not even used your account to watch oh, it yet. What? You understand what I mean? No, you've had far too long. This is before <laughs> the gym. In fact, there was a lot of things that were going on before the gym. There were. <laughs> there was, like prep to get a gym. Mm. It's hard. Uh, two, what's the best points number to build an army around for friendly games at a local games workshop? We think 500. Right? Yeah, 500. That's good, isn't it? Um, bearing in mind that I haven't played yet just thinking ahead oh you need to get on it my friend mm-hmm. thanks guys watching your videos inspires me to get more into the hobby well that's what we're here for mm-hmm. that is what we are here for next up we've got the dr pepper machine does everyone in the combat share the fight value of the best fighter on their side and can multiple shaman stack fury yes and no in that order can you go yeah. right down line even i'm even it's amazing. I always feel good when, when all these questions come up. And Jamie says to them, I'm like, yes, I've got it right. Because <laughs> I, I answer them in, <laughs> this sounds really bad, but when, when there's a question, I answer it out loud in my mind first. Yeah. And then I'm always really like, worried or confused if I get it wrong. So. Next up we've got George Harold. He's put, if, hypothetically, I were a cheesy power gamer, would you recommend modelling Haradrim warriors with swords or with axes? Axes. Axes all day long. Would the fate or piercing strike be more useful? Axes. axes. He's defensible. I just go for the axes. Low defence models go for axes, high defence models go for swords. Yeah. If you like fire uh, Next up, we've got David Lowe. Uh, he's gone two weeks without asking a question, oh. which just isn't on. I agree. Although he has finished uni now and has a puppy to look after. So puppy after uni. He's wow. been somewhat preoccupied. Using our videos to squeeze in some hobby time has kept him sane. At least uh, he appreciated the review of Unboxing the Box video. Seen it, seen it pop up on Facebook, made his day. I tend to watch most of the videos after that, didn't watch that That's all right. You said it was quite a popular video. It is a very popular video. You're all nuts. <laughs> uh, my question this week is inspired by that, is if you were to drop a load of money on models, let's say £300 in one go from Games Workshop, what would you buy? He would get, oh, David would get full warbands of Fiend troops and other related models still available, then blow the rest on heroes, monsters and stuff needed for the journey book scenarios. Sorry for the long question, and so thanks to the unlucky son who has to read it, that's me, and I'm down for at least a five a month for additional content. Oh, that's great to know. We're going to get that sorted out. We need to work out what our PayPal password is. Yeah. <clears throat> I forgot. It's been a long time. No, it's been a while. Um, yeah, I'd get all the stuff for the journey book scenario, so that's what I'm aiming to build up towards at the moment. Yeah, that'd but, be good. But I bought the Barrow Whites, and I bought the, the Fellowship of the Ring journey book from Elmer Games, and I picked it up and we go, ooh, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, yeah, it'd, it'd have to be like one army in one go. In my mind, mm. so I think, right, okay, what arm, what, what five hundred point army can we get for three hundred quid? Probably get a couple. Yeah, if five hundred quid, I get, I get the Lake Towners. Just five do three. it. I just buy the Lake Towners. Five three hundred quid. I will buy some food. <laughs> <laughs> stop! Stop paying off your. Yeah, pay off that Astro turf. <laughs> oh dearie me. Uh, so if anybody wants to send 300 pounds <laughs> to the channel yeah. anyway we'll move on we've got Kurt Leach uh, he's not asking what we think of a list he's put can Merkwood Rangers take axes <laughs> instead of two daggers even though two daggers are in the war gear yeah, if they can would they lose their knife fight a special rule well, I think we answered this quite thoroughly last week no it's cheating it's cheating it's scumbag you, you actually can't do that they have it listed that they have elven daggers or 
If it says hand, all, all things are assumed to have a hand, unless it specifically states they are armed with a dagger, they are armed with an axe, they are armed with a two handed claymore, they are armed with whatever. So, what happens, of course, in old profiles where that wasn't necessarily the case because of special types weren't included, you can just change them. You can just change it. So, you can put axes on your Corsair Reavers, you know, you can put swords with your dwarves, yeah. you can st- stick axes to Woses and yeah. stuff like that, uh, as long as you don't use Blue Sack. Um, yeah, so you'll see a disgrace. <laughs> and so they, they can't, so they wouldn't lose their knife fight special rule because they can't take the axe in the first place. You know, cheating. So don't do that. So next up, we've got Generation Shift 82. 92. 92. Everything's blurry. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks again, guys. Time to do some painting. Well, that's what you're good at, pal. You're very good at it. And uh, I still need to send you stuff. Jamie, that's a fine beard you're growing there. Oh, thank you. Do you plan on growing a Brian Blessed? If you can keep growing outwards that much. Can you do an impression of Brian Blessed? No. Oh, come on, Jamie. We need to get Jamie doing some impressions, you know. Well, all, all you do is like shout bar really loud and open your mouth as wide as possible. But you have to shout me. We'll get a YouTube video up for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the recent departure of the Perry Brothers from Games Workshop. Sad, sad, Ooh, really. I'm thinking that they have finished the contract with sculpting for the Lord of the Rings Hobbit range because they were just the pair that were driving force behind SPG and they had great connections to PJ himself. What are your thoughts on this? Could all the models have been designed and ready by now? I'm thinking it's possible. But they're probably happening. Yeah, it's a sad day that they announced it on their Facebook page that they, they had finished their term with uh, Games Workshop. They, they, they've pretty much sculpted nearly every model for the Lord of the Rings range. Why are Games Workshop allowing that to happen? Because they were contracted in for Lord of the Rings. Is that it? I think so, yeah. yeah. Perry Majors have got their own website, and they've got their own ranges, and their models are just incredible. I don't really get that look. Yeah, yeah. Perry Majors, um, they've got loads of stuff like, no, no, loads of Napoleonics, loads of. They have a YouTube Westerns. channel. I don't think so. No. Damn it. That could have been a great opportunity for an impromptu scouring. <laughs> <laughs> go onto their Facebook page and say, there you go, this is this week's edition of. The scouring of the internet, of the internet, of, the internet. of Facebook, of Facebook. You're going to go onto the Perry, and you're going to wish them all the best of luck. So, listen, the guys from the GBHL YouTube channel, they really admire your work. You know, James in particular <laughs> has, has been monitoring <laughs> it extensively, <laughs> uh, and has never ever asking for free models. Um, and just go on there and say we've been directed here and just wish you all the best of luck for the future. You, we really admire your work. If you like the Lord of the Rings range, it's worth, worth sending. So that's this week, the scouring of Facebook. That's the one. <laughs> um, and then, yes, but how's the model sending off coming on, James? I, I'm used to, I'm going I'm to do that this Saturday. James is going to send me a text message yeah. in the morning. He's going to say, send off your stuff. Send your stuff. He's going to take care and all the best in this next week and happy hobbying. I would <coughs> like some happy hobbying. Yeah. We get some today. Get some games for no, I can't wait to roll some dice. Uh, Stuart Smith says, Hi guys, my question this week is can Radigas the Brown and Elrond renew themselves or does it have to be other models? Also, does the Undying Special Rule about regaining will also work when any models cast a spell? Yes and yes. The answer to that. The second one. Yeah, yeah. Any anyway, models. It says when a, spell, when a spell is cast within six inches, he regains the point of will. So he's really Ooh. good. At, so when, when wizards are nearby, he's regaining will all the time. Wow. See, so it's like sap fourth. No, it's not sap fourth. Chewy. It's, it's it's some magical name that draws power from it. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Good answers there, Stuart. Make sure you ask a question next week. Uh, next up, we've got Dave Egan. He's put this came up during a recent game between me and my mate. The rule book says a hero can't benefit from more than one heroic action per phase. If two of your heroes both call heroic moves and are both within six inches of each other, what happens? Uh, you, you choose an order. So one will go first, then the other one will go. Both her- if they both mm-hmm. call it heroic moves. So similarly, if one hero calls a heroic move and another calls a heroic march, what happens? If two heroes are both in combat with one model, one heroic strikes and one and heroic combats, if they kill their opponent, can they both charge again? Cheers, lads. Happy Hobbit strategy battle gaming. It's it, it's an it's an awkward one. In, in the the um, Greenwich Hobbit League FAQ that um, Damien and others wrote, they decided that you can be benefited from two or more. So let's say um, a hero next to Gandalf. Gandalf calls a heroic channel. Another hero calls a heroic move. He can be affected by the heroic move, and his heroic channel can take place during it. 
That's the example that they gave out. Okay. I think in the very basic rules as written, it does clearly state that heroes can't benefit from more than one. Mm-hmm. So in the instance of two heroes in combat, one heroic strikes and one heroic combats, the one who's heroic struck can't then charge on because yeah. he can't benefit from the bonus of the in heroic combat. Yeah. But would retain his fight value. What about the heroic move and heroic march example? Um, I guess one would call the heroic move and the truth of move, or then he gets to call the heroic march. Yeah, I just don't think it would work. But that, that, that's obviously not how the rules are intended to be perceived, so it's just a mistake. Now, there you put. I don't get it right. Stephen Fry. Uh, what was he doing? I think, I think it's just a thing about swearing. His signature, I think. All oh, right. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, Dave Egan, but I can't read it out. <laughs> Next up, we've got Don Barnett. He really enjoys the fluff scenario battle reports and has that been played, never on, the played on the channel. Uh, however, as most were written for the old rules and the books are all in out of production, I was thinking that you lads should write up some new fluff scenarios yourselves. Create a proper document with force outlines, maps, etc. You can put your GBHL stamp on them along with the appropriate GW disclaimer. This would be really nice original content for your channel. It's a long work. <laughs> we, we could do... Um, you should yeah. custom scenarios for battle companies, etc. Yeah. And you know, just be a, a written version yeah. that could maybe a, be a PDF that people who subscribe on a gold membership with us could get. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely something that we think we've, we've actually discussed that before, but it was yeah. a long time ago. So, uh, yeah, definitely something that we can do in the future. <coughs> oh no, next up, we've got Galadrim. <laughs> it's not that I don't like Galadrim, it's um, anyway, hey guys. Going to a one-day Escalation-style tournament soon. Hoping you guys could critique my list. Uh, the way it works is you add 300 points to your army in each progressive game, in addition to whatever you brought in the previous round. So now I quite like this. This is the question I was talking about earlier. I quite well, like this one. Okay, so he's put Game 1, Domination. He's put Gundabad uh, Black Shield Captain. Uh, five Gundabad Black Shields. Five Goblins with Spear. One more Glorder. Moria Goblin Shaman, six Gundabad Black Shields, five Goblins with Spear, one more order. So for domination, at 300 points, that's quite a big force. I yeah. like it. Yeah, very good. Game two, Lords of Battle. So an extra 300 points. So what he does is he brings a Barrow White, three Cave Trolls. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Stops <laughs> enemy heroes, and you've got three monsters hurling around. And you're not bringing many hmm. monsters for... He's striking points. me over... Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Certain type of gamer. Anyway, for that, you do have five... Uh, you've got ten points spare. Um, so give two cave trolls uh, chains for throwing for throwing weapons. Yeah. Well, can you not add? He's got space for a, a goblin more in one of his. Yeah, I suppose the the, the uh, I wonder if the three hundred points that you add up has to be spent there and then. Oh, right, and so not yeah. increase, maybe. Maybe. But get two throwings. Now, but game three, he he adds numbers. More three, goblin captain. Three hundred points. It's hold ground. And he just spams out captains and shamans with warriors. Yeah, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Keep up the awesome content. No, it seems like you've got it in your head. That's not, well know. thought out. Because what's, what's, what you're demonstrating there is, you know, um, you're thinking about how to win the scenarios. Yeah. And that, that, that's the difference, I think, in a short period of time between being an, an okay player and being a good player yeah. is knowing how to win the game. You know, win, than, win the scenario. Win right. the scenario, yeah rather than just beating the other force. Uh, next up we've got the Prancing Pony. <coughs> Stockport 2.0 is the weekend before my birthday, so fingers crossed. You're there. My You're first there, purchase in the hobby was the Escape from Goblin Town set. I paid £70 and got the little rule book. So you think anyone at an independent tournament would complain that I printed off the Heroes, no, the, uh, the Heroes and Villains of Middle-Earth PDF? No, that, that's what it's there for, for yeah. use when you've got the small rule book. Um, also, I've been looking at the Fantasy Wood Elves on GW. Might have to convert a Thranduil on Moose for the fluff. Uh, it's got a link there to the Wild Riders. I uh, hope we see some Merkwood Warriors in the next release that we see on the cliffs in that scene. So some armoured. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'd like as well. That'd be, good. That'd be really cool. Well, I'm glad to hear that your Prancing Pony is coming to yeah. Stockport 2.0. And all of that's going to be announced very, very soon in terms of the actual details. Maybe we could share a drink with him. Oh. Oh, 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 Jamie, that was oh, good. That was good. I'm too tired to, to <laughs> come up with something as witty as that right now. Uh, that's that's really good. Uh, we want you there, and there are going to be details announced soon. Early bird tickets. 
We're going to release slightly more early bird tickets because they did literally went in well, a day, didn't they? Uh, early bird tickets will be on sale hopefully by the time this goes out. Oh. They went out yesterday, oh. so if there's still some available, go buy them now. Go, 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 go. Uh, now, some people did ask why are our tickets slightly more expensive than last time? Yep, yeah, uh, well, a couple of reasons. Um, one, the main reason for it is our sponsorship with Element Games brought us nowhere near the amount of money that we thought it was going to, so our sort of big income... Less than 10% of what we expected, so that gives yeah. you a bit of an idea. Yeah. Um, so our sort of big influx of money comes from the tournaments, and this time we want to buy better cameras because... We need to. I, I, can't, to. I can't keep using this phone. The, the, the phones get us too barracks recorded at a stretch if we're quick. And there's been so many times where our stuff's just died on us, and we've still got loads of people around, especially now it's picking up a bit more in Stockport. Yeah. We're still playing games, and we're like, ah, oh, just need to record it, but we can't. So Having to delete stuff, and like, I had to delete a bunch of videos I didn't really want to delete. To um, space. Just to make space for a bat rep that I'd invested a lot of time in, and literally, had, it only had a couple of turns to go, but you can't just cut the bat rep off because you've not got the room, so it's like, where do I delete from? So we really are in need of better equipment, so... Um, the reason why they're more expensive is to support your hobby, hobby and support this channel. Yeah. Um, next up we've got Tom Turtle. He's what just thinking, wouldn't it be pretty good call to make a wild wild chieftain your army leader in blockade, as they don't count as cavalry and therefore will start the same distance from the board edge as infantry model and yet still get the 10 inch movement. Yeah. yeah. Same thing as like, same thing as like, like Eagle, Guahe, um Eagle, obviously Guahe, or Gulliver. Yeah. Yeah, or Bayon, eight inch movement. Although you don't yeah. want him to be that, you get, we just get dragged away. Dragged away. Kited. Um, also, do you think it's fair to say that a little of, if not most, SVG gamers enter the hobby from more Tolkien oriented backgrounds rather than being in other gaming systems? I've always thought this to be true. What do you think? Thanks again. Cheers from the land of sheep and singing. It's from Wales. It's from Wales, obviously. Um, yeah, I'd agree. Quite a lot of people do come from Tolkien rather than the game. I did just wanted to play the game. My first war game. It was really? It's my first war game. I, I came because I really enjoyed the films, but was always sort of interested in Games Workshop. But just walked past and saw my, some of my friends from school in there, so I was like, hooray! I was a little bit like that. Every time I walked past, walked past the Games Workshop, you I, would look look, I would look, look and then think, mm, no, no. Nice. You know, what, even before even before taking up Lord of the Rings, I'd walk past and, like, you know, I'd look in and make a little, like, comment to Jane. Like, you imagine me if I would play into a soldier's kind of thing. And secretly inside was thinking, I would love to play to a soldier. <laughs> you know, so... So, yeah, but I do agree with you, agree with you there. Yeah, yeah I tend to see I that a lot. I think a lot of people now who have played a lot of games are almost coming almost back to Lord back of the Rings. Yeah. A lot is what we see. Oh, I, I picked it back up again. I'm going for Lord of the Rings or yeah. The Hobbit this time. It's like, good. Yeah, I'd agree with you. That was my own call. If you heard that. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Matt Rondel. 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 Matt Rondel. Sacre bleu. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> croissant. Uh, I played a game called Tribal Wars. Yeah. Immediate nostalgia from that. Is that the game you were talking about last week? week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see how it's in inverted commas? Yeah, yeah. That's a quotation from last week. Oh, I thought it was being sarky. Um, I played a game called Tribal Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Tribal Wars is a great game. I need to go and check it out. Uh, next up, we've got Tour Seragon. Hi, guys. I've just rewatched Desolation of Stop. Uh, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every time. Every time. And it seems to me, Peter Jackson. Jackson. Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson. Has made Legolas the mightiest being that has ever lived in Middle Earth. He's a killing machine who never misses with a single arrow, Lord of the Rings films included. If Games Workshop replicated this, he'll be worth over a thousand points. So who would you say is the most overpowered good model in the Hobbit SBG? Good work, guys. Overpowered good model. Well, first off, you know, technically, in the two towers, Legolas does not take down that berserker. That berserker. He doesn't miss them. He doesn't? Yeah, but he does. Because, like... If someone was running towards me and I shot them and I shot them in the arm and they just kept on coming, then technically I failed. You know what I mean? You've got to, you've got to drop them. So, um, overpowered good model. I'm just going through. Tom Bombardier. 
Did you see that discussion? Oh, yeah. yeah. How, that was how, brilliant. How, how to, to kill, kill Tom Bombay. Right, so it's so funny. You're going to floor him to get rid of his master rule, barge a model that's not in combat with him, knock a model into him to make him take an in the way test and push him into a big chasm. But it has to be, there has to be enemy models forming the general. So he can't go any other way. So he can't go in any other direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Basically, he can't be killed. Yeah. Um, well then I, he can't go anything in terms of the no, yeah. Um unless you pick up the prize and seize the prize and then you just merry dog your way off to, to victory overpowered good models are oh, there overpowered good models just thinking through all the different source books and thinking yeah I'm just going through army lists to think yeah Woses Garn Brigan 45 points for what he is but that's not overpowered it's underpointed it? underpointed there's a difference overpowered because there's, there's plenty of underpointed stuff. Yeah. Overpowered for good. I can't. There's nothing that sticks out, and I think, wow, it's totally broken. Alfred. No, it's not overpowered. It's not overpowered. It's, it's, it's breaking when you use it with you know, bomber, but no, I can't think of any good models that are. Maybe you guys should make a suggestion. What do yeah. you think? No, I think Legolas comes closest. Yeah, just with auto hitting. He's a He's a game changer. A game changer. Game winner. <laughs> Next up, we've got Barry O'Neill. Hey, Barry. I looked into the lights. And my, my vision is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll read this one. Thanks. Now, if this messes up the order, so I have to read no, some. No, it's not. I, I just read the source, didn't I? Uh, okay. Well, anyways. But, cheers, guys. I will likely hang around for the Monday after DOS 2.0. So looking forward to it now. Brilliant. Can't wait to get some games here, everybody. No SVG question this week. But I'm curious, James. How have you managed to rope in Gordon Darcy to work in your gym. Who's Gordon Darcy? No idea. Oh, I feel so stupid. <laughs> Someone makes a reference I'm not aware of. Um, Gordon Darcy. Um, he must be. He must be someone with a big beard. Mm, yeah, must be. Because yeah. Neil's got an impressive beard. Yeah, so a good beard. He's such a nice guy as well. He came he said, this week. Of course, we've had the gym. We've had all of our normal classes, uh, but we've also had this school. Um, where we go in and we, we train kids which is great fun <laughs> we were both been on the Monday and he's been on the Tuesday and Wednesday doing the school so I've been having to run the gym and the classes it's been tough and he came in yesterday he'd been at the school I'd been in the gym all day he came running in to get his keys so he could go and do the sale classes in the evening and I just looked at him and I thought he looks exactly how everybody has been saying that I look absolutely shattered you know that oh, moment yeah. you just look at someone and you think Got he's you. absolute like he's been an absolute trooper at the moment, you know, because he, he only gets paid for classes, doesn't get paid for yeah. man in the gym or anything. It's, yeah. you no, know, it's just you're, you're, a, you're a horrible boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, I'm not his boss. He's uh, he's self-employed. Ah. <laughs> but he's but he's a superstar. He's done really really good. Um, and we'll, we'll 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 definitely speak to you, Barry, about getting your t-shirt sorted out because I definitely sent you an email when you sent another one back. Mm. That's where the little conversation. Yeah, and when we've sorted out the PayPal thing, we'll tell you guys who want to know how to pay for it. Um, we'll give you the PayPal details. Yeah. So, to be fair, they, they, only have, they just have to PayPal I love wargaming at gmail.com. Yeah. But I think it'd be easy if we send out an email to them saying, can you please send them money? So everyone yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, next up is Woman Chica! Woman Chica! Woman Chica! Um, why would you take Blofund over rather than the twins in an all hero list? Obviously, higher fight, option for higher defence, and higher will, wounds and fate. But the twins have a higher combined might and also get three attacks each, assuming you use their rule for bonus attacks. And just seem like a better deal for your points. I'm not denying Glofi is a tank, just wondering what other advantages he has. Fight seven is a fight seven is up yeah. just massive in comparison. He's not he's not always going to be using his um, might to throw strike. Throw strike, yeah. Um, people are going to be using their might to throw strike against him. He causes terror. He is resistant to magic when he's got his armor glove. Gondolin on, which you're going to take. And defense 7 is key. Defense 7, nice. Stop strength 4 hurting you so much. Um, and also, the, 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 the bigger thing for him is that if you kill off one of the twins, the other one is made pretty much redundant. As If you know what you're doing against an all-hero force, you'll use a model that's mounted to get the final wound on the twin. And then the other twin is then chasing him. Mm. And he should, he should try, try and kill the horses first. So if he's on foot, that of a twin, he's chasing an item model, he'll never catch him. Yeah. Without burning his own might. And by the time he's done that, he's well out of the game. Eek. 
obviously you're tracking them close together, but it doesn't always work out. Yeah, Glorf is a tank. Good if you can get them both into your all here, right? Yeah, that'd be good. Because they do bring a lot of mites to the table for mm. good value. I think they're good yeah, value. Yeah, the yeah. twins are good value. Uh, next up, we've got Hal Torian. Like, hey guys, I've got some more questions. Excellent. Whoa, but how whoa, important whoa, is whoa, archery? Whoa, 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 you messed up question. Well, Graham Sargent, I'm so sorry. It's the sergeant, Graham Sargent himself. Hello, chaps. Interesting Q&A, as we have come to expect. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm glad that you're enjoying it, mate. Uh, wow, when you flashed that picture of Jamie's big Afro hair last week, I thought he looked like Jonathan Creek. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that comparison I've really seen that. Times. Did you... I put him... Do you not remember? The main, I'm going to show it now. And I put in a picture of me with the big Afro hair. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I've not seen that. Nice. No, Don't watch it. Did I not? Did I not? I've not, I'm not this week. No, I did it on my, on my phone, remember? Oh, yes. She left everything at the gym. That's right. I left everything at the gym. I was thinking then, how did you, how did you manage to edit a video that I uploaded? <laughs> um, so, it's, but anyhow, back to hobby-related stuff. Without a doubt, Hobby SBG is among the finest miniature model skirmish games. Damn yes, right. it, yes, it is. Uh, but have you guys ever dabbled in other skirmish system fantasy or historical? I've had heaps of fun with Saga, Chaos in Carpathia, Witchfinder General, and the rules with no name. A Ooh. rather nice cowboy miniatures game. Any experience yourselves, or is it Hobbit Hobby only? See you at Longbottom, I hope. Keep up the good work you're doing. Yeah. Um, skirmish games. We want to try Batman. Yep, Batman's technically a skirmish game. But the rules are a bit. The rules are a bit iffy. It's Spanish that's been translated poorly into English. Um, it's technically. Would you say that Star Wars is a. Technically, a skirmish game. It is really because it's not you're not yeah. using tracer troops. You're using you know, individuals. individuals. Yeah, I'd say Star X Wing is. Um, I played Necromunda for a while, which is sort of like Battle Companies for 40k. Sounds good. Yeah, it was quite fun. Um, I want to play Infinity. Yeah, that's meant to be quite good. Um, what else? Skirmishing wise. No, for skirmish games, other than that, it's been... It's all about the Hobbit hobby. It is. All about the Hobbit hobby. Support it. Um, I'd like to play Saga. Saga's always been something that's always interesting me, but I just don't think there's enough people around Stockport to get a game in. Yeah. You don't need enough people. You have me, Ghibli. i <laughs> play Saga. Yeah. Uh, but see you in Longbottom, I hope. You're I'm, going. I'm going. You're, so you're talking yourself out of it, aren't you? Well, I wasn't going to be going at first, because you know, I knew that I had a lot on, and then... That damn charming man, Tom Harrison, called me and was extra nice to me, but he always is, and pretty much convinced me that I should go, so I could go down there and I could film some stuff with him on, you know, before it and after it as well. Have you bought a ticket? No. No, no I've not bought the ticket yet, because after this last two weeks, the, the launch week at the gym, and then this following week after, I mean, I've got no instructors other than said Neil at the moment and there are times where we need three of us so not even two of us but three of us to be in one place at once and you know I'm having to get people in to sort of cover the gym yeah you know it's not ideal really um I just don't think I'm going to be able to do it but I've got a week to think about it Tom's in Croatia and when he gets back I'm going to let him know but it's yeah. also Sunday Monday which is, is, it, is he in Croatia for that? Huh? is he cr in Croatia or is he back I think he goes today or tomorrow oh okay you say he messaged me the other day saying I've watched all the videos on the channel. When's the next stuff coming out? <laughs> he, he's gone back and restarted rewatching the battle reps. Good man. That helps us. Rewatching stuff really helps. And so he, he says he liked you a lot more in the, in the very first one, but you're a lot more muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be a little bit more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now I'm down, you know, with our subscribers. I'm quite relaxed with you all. Um, so, you know, I can be a bit... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to make it. I really want to come. But Sunday, Monday stuff because it, it works on the assumption that people don't work bank holidays. Yeah, <laughs> self employed over every day. Bank holiday would be busy for me. You're busy in bank holidays usually. Unfortunately, though, I think my, my, I tried to get the full week off because that's my birthday week. But then, yeah, but the boss rejected it. I was like, oh, okay. Mm, it's it's 21 or something. 23. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 23. Nobody likes you when you're 23, apparently. Who said that? 22. Really? That must be true. Yeah, exactly. Must be true. So yeah, be good to be good to see you guys down there. And uh, Jamie is going to win that tournament. He is going to win it. Good. He is going to win it. No prisoners. 
No prisoners. No prisoners, no worries list. At that point list, the point points uh, value, it's going to be tough to beat Damien. Nah. How Torian, <laughs> he's put, hey guys, I've got some more questions. How important is archery in the list? And how about magic? Do you find these necessary elements of success in the SPG? Yes. Archery is really important because if you come up against something which is more manoeuvrable than you and has archery and you don't have a way of countering it, you're chasing it. You're in a lot of trouble, as a lot of people found out against me. Yep. And I experienced the receiving end of it from David Reed. I had no archery, he had full one third elbows. I had the Shadow Lord, but it still makes sense for him to just move away and keep shooting into the ball of darkness because I can't hurt him at range. He's still going to get some sixes. Yeah. Still going to get them, so it's, it is very important uh, in terms of magic. I think it becomes more important as you go to higher points. Yeah, games. you know, I don't, I don't I think, think it's as be, important. It as, depends what you mean by magic. Things like fury, yes, you want them still at your lower points. Yeah, um, if you're talking about magic like ring raids, then I think you can get one in probably about 500 points and not hurt your numbers too much because they can lead troops. Wizards, you have to be sort of 700 points to get your first one in. Yeah. Uh, he's put, uh, also, I've been playing a small campaign of Gondorian fiefdom civil war with friends to get them into the hobby. It's been great fun. That does sound really cool. Uh, Doon here and Angbor have refused to provide soldiers and funds to defend the realm against Mordor. The forelong is sent by Denethor with a contingent to hold the rebellious lords to their oaths. That sounds well cool. It's right on my street. Uh, in smaller games, the clansmen of Vale Archers have slaughtered the patrols of Axemen and Minister of Warriors, but as we progress, the rebels have been getting walloped. Angbor has been injured, died in all three games uh, he's been in, and finally failed his recovery role and is gone for good. <laughs> sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's been great fun, and I was thinking James might want to try something similar with Rohan. I am. <laughs> when I get the time, I am. I've got it all written out and planned. Uh, I know that the Riders of Snowborn never show up to Dunharrow in the Return of the King movie. Uh, I thought it might be cool to do a scenario with AMO returning after fighting in Mordor to make them men of Snowborn pay the iron price of breaking their oaths. <laughs> By the way, really great content last week. May have been your best week so far. Congratulations and thanks for all the hard work. No worries. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's been good because we, we've got, we had a lot in the backlog. We're starting to get thin again now, but we had a lot in the backlog. So a lot of battle reports and a lot of battle companies and not as much filler, which is probably why you thought that the quality of content release was better because we've only got good quality stuff at the moment. <laughs> well, you think, you think the unboxings are good quality? They are my favourite videos. Okay, good. Uh, Stellar's 91, SYHH equals support your hobbit hobby, you plonkers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. How do we not get that? That's embarrassing. <laughs> I'd also be willing to contribute to £5 a month for content. Five pound or £5 pound a month for content. Will there Fantastic. be GBHL tank tops there for winners? Well, you, if you get the T-shirt and then do this... <laughs> there you go just get a pair of scissors and there you go GBHL tank tops easy peasy yeah. 10 mark F91 hey this question <laughs> just quickly move on yes next question uh, this question could go down like a lead balloon if either of you watch it but who is your favourite Doctor Who um, I don't watch Doctor Who well, neither do I. Uh, it's less than six weeks now to the new episodes. Come on, Swery, Peter Capaldi, Happy Strategy Battle Gaming. Who's that? Yeah. Uh, that's, um, have you seen Thick of It? Uh, yeah. You know the Scottish guy? Yeah. He swears a lot? Yeah. That's Peter Capaldi. Okay. Well, I see. And I see he's, the new he's, doctor. he's the next doctor. Yeah. What is he? Yeah, good for him. Well, I know who you mean. Uh, no, I don't watch it, I'm afraid. Uh, Luke Lee Bruin, he's got, hi guys, I've just ordered myself an all-mounted Rohan army. Just, I, I should have mistakes. like, my Rohanites. You're mistakes. My Rohanites. You're all making mistakes. <laughs> uh, really looking forward to, to using it. Yeah, it's, it's good fun. <laughs> it would, just give it time and a lot of theory and then trying to put the theory in practice. My heroes are very similar to yours. I see Urkham Brand as a compulsory choice more than an option. Yep. Uh, when making the army list, I started by putting Aemon Marshall and Riddermark and Eowyn in the army when I realised they came to the same points as Aemon Knight and Pelennor. I've tried that. And um, I think it depends what kind of player you are. But when I have Marshall and Riddermark, I play a completely different game because I just 
not as confident yeah. in comp to do that charge. And I can see when I have had like Marshall and Riddermark, I probably am more skirmishy than I am when I've got Knight of Penmore. Because I don't know Knight of Penmore can, it's the, th- it's the three, three, three wounds attacks. and three fate and three attacks in the base. So important as a stab. Um, he said, but my question is, have you had any experience using Eowyn? Is she worth her points in five, six hundred points? Yeah. Uh, or is the Knight of the Penmore just too good an option uh, not to take? Well, he is, he, in my opinion, I would rather have Knight of the Penmore <coughs> than not. Uh, Damien thinks it's worth actually dropping more riders to get Eowyn in for the, you know, having right. almost like an all, all hero. Yeah. Dropping some of the elites. But I'm a fan at 500, Knight of the Penmore, at 600, Eowyn. And actually bring in some foot troops. Yeah. So you found. Next up. Next up. Next up, we've got Billy Fitzmorris. Enough of the Batman impressions now, James. Good. Reggie! <laughs> Although I have to admit, you do have a better Batman voice than Christian Bale. So then, I've played four games in my Dolgo Dirt list, three wins and one loss. My problem being, I don't quite know how to use a Castellan of Dolgo Dirt. He didn't do much in three of them games, but in one, he actually won me the game by using his Morgul Blade in the last turn to kill Saruman. So, should I use him as a hero or leader killer, or use him to wipe out troops? Hero or leader, leader, leader killer. Leader killer. All day long. He's limited in the number of combats he can be in, so you got to use him for the right ones. He's tailored for it perfectly. Strength five, five, five to attack. Skip past, you know, your uh, defense seven. sevens. Yeah. You know, it's the fact as well that when he's losing the combat, he can use his will as fate. So you, you just get him on a leader. That's what he's there yeah. for. Definitely, all day long. Next up, we've got Larry Miller. He's put, Jamie, do you think you'll ever make one of the great Gibbons Horde into a shaman? Uh, though it would be good, the fact that said goblin would have to gain three promotions and get the right ones each time uh, to Will and the shaman special rule. And that you'd have to choose Will points over Might points. Seems like it might not be worth it. Also, while looking for something in the main rule books FAQ, I found that the great beast cannot be knocked down by nature's wrath. Oh, that's good. If you could send us a link to where that is, that'd be good to have, know and have in the future. Pop it on the Facebook. Yep. That'd be brilliant. And yes, I, I've thought about making it into a shaman. I had the option at one point, and I decided not to because so he, he gets furious his first spell, and I need to get a will point to cast it, which would disappear straight away. So, very unlikely we're going to get a shaman giblet, unfortunately. Good. <laughs> Next up, Kevin Demansky. Hi guys, my question this week is what unit from any faction do you think has the worst points unit per value, i.e. is overpriced uh, for far too little or underpriced for far too many stats? All the best from the land of maple, from the land of maple and bacon. Watch the corner for underpriced Yep, all day long. Now, nah, Roses. Roses have got to be the most underpriced model in the game. What are they? The seven points. Uh, fight three, strength three, defense three, one attack, one wound, courage three. They've got woodland creature. They come with a spear. They have poison blow pipes. They hit on three plus. But, and they've got an elven cloak. They can't have an elven cloak. They've got plus one to wound again. That's five points. You know, just for the elven cloak, really. It's a special rule, though. That's what I mean. If you think yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Well, they, okay, they start with seven. They start seven points for their profile. Mm-hmm. They get woodland creature. Um, so five points for basically for their stat line. They gain mother creatures, one of them, and the spears here. Well, spear and the blood pipe, the two. Yeah. So that they, they get all their special rules for free. Elven cloak is essentially five points. They get plus one to wound against orcs, goblins, and urukai, and their wooden creature. Yeah. Good argument. They're easily, easily the most overpriced <laughs> for too little. Who are they overpriced for too little? What's overpriced? A lot of people Grim, think Grim Hammers are overpriced. I think for what they are, they're fairly priced. It's that Khazard Guard right. is underpriced. Right. Right. So the comparison between them is that Khazard are better. Yeah. yeah. Overpriced. Per unit, per unit. Overpriced. Again, you, you you have this moment where both of us are scrolling through in our minds on yeah. each list. <laughs> Underpriced model. An overpriced model. I'd like to say that the, the cave troll maybe is a bit overpriced. I think he should be a bit cheaper. Yeah. 
Maybe. from Taiwan, like the eagle. Yeah, the eagle, guahe. Yeah, guahe. Guahe, there we go. Same for you now. Anyway, hope that helps, Kevin. Thank you very much for your question again. Next up, we've got Furious Wog. He's got hello again to speak friend and question 31. Wow, was it really that many? <laughs> It's unbelievable, isn't it? Anyway, my questions this week are, one, in my view, berserkers are better than ferals because they have a two-handed weapon, better defense, and courage seven. Yes, they are three points more, but that's really it. Am I not seeing something in order to make me want to take ferals? Yeah, you're missing something. It depends on the sort of the meta of the, of the time. The defense six protects you against strength three, but is wasted against strength two uh, bows, whereas the, fight, the, the defense five is the same against crossbows and regular bows, and strength four of things, uh, which a lot of evil now take, is wasted on defense six. Yeah. It's because it, I, I, in a lot of tournaments you've got evil versus evil and good versus good, and yeah. so that means there's a lot of strength four, and it's it's over the scale as well. So yeah, it, it might seem cheap that there are only three points more per individual berserker, and of course, Berserker versus Feral, straight up one on one. Of course, the Berserker is better, and that's why you pay more points. But it's it's what you're up against. Yeah, it's what you're up against. You know whether you're, it, the defense six is wasted. You know if you've got Fury. Yeah, you want the defense six. So. But, but, okay, but let's say you're up against me. You want Berserkers because strength three bows hurt the Ferals. Mm -hmm. Let's play against you. You want Ferals because you can get more of them. Mm -hmm. And still fight for still you know, two attacks, strength four. And you've got no strength three shooting, no strength four shooting, so yep. strength six, strength five is just as good. Yeah. Because you've got lots of sons available. Yep. So having the mix of them is probably the best. And obviously the berserk is better being defense six you can he's prepared against more. But you pay the points. So you know it quickly ends up as well. It does indeed, eh? It does indeed. Um, next up we've only got three more questions. We've got Dirt Life. That's a new name. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, hey, dudes. This is Conan and Friends. Ah, back with a new <laughs> PG name. Okay. I wanted to change that to <laughs> PG name. Fantastic. He, want, he wants the name to be read out. Yeah, he, does, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to change it to The Dirt, but Google wouldn't let him. Uh, I've missed a couple of weeks, so I'll come say today for with a few questions. Uh, did we read all the other questions out? Yeah, we did. Did we? What was the last one? No, we didn't. We just read about the Feral Berserker thing. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Furious Wild. Well, sorry, Dirt Life, you've got to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, what if the last March of the Ends wasn't the last March of the Ends? If they all came to Minas Tirith for Skidia, do you think they would have had much of an impact on the war or just getting away? It would be cool, though. Yeah, they'd have an impact. Definitely, I think. They're the fact for good, don't they? It's like they're going to start mashing up Minas the Minas Tirith warriors. Yeah, uh, so I'm attempting some elvish terrain, kind of a command post built into rock. Um, a small waterfall, completely made up, but might be awful, but worth a try. It's difficult because the only reference I have is Rivendell, but surely you guys must have attempted some kind of terrain in your early Hobbit days. No. Nope. I am in my early Hobbit days. <laughs> now, like everyone else, I love the battle companies, especially the upgraded system around the campfire after the battle. I just wish they were longer. Keep up the awesome work. They will get longer as we get bigger forces. Yeah. Hopefully. Back to Dirt Life. Yeah, back to Dirt Life. Um, Sorry, Dirt Life. And sorry, Furious Wog, for putting you short initially. Um, I've missed a couple of weeks, so I'll come say today with a few questions. When do you think the new models will be released? December, January, that time. Yeah. Uh, do you think they will make a new mounted Legolas model? Probably not. I doubt it. What are these woeses you guys keep mentioning? They're uh, warriors of the, of the Druid and Forest, or woes as warriors, or wild men of the Druid and Forest or something. They're, they're in the Free People section uh, in the Wanderers of the Wild. They're in the book. They're in the Free People's book. No, they're in the book. No, they're actually in the book, aren't they? Yeah, yeah they're, not, they're not made up. They're not Games Workshop creation. They are in there's the book. A, there's a scenario that uses Rohan, Roses, obviously Rohan, Roses, and uh, Orcs. And I've got, I think with your riders, we should have enough to do that scenario. Let's do it. I'm up for it. I'm, I'm building up all the stuff for the um, during, I think we should do the full fellowship journey. If we can. I think yeah, that'd be that'd awesome. Be cool. Yeah. We've got some nice things planned for you guys. Um, do you know what Games Workshop are planning to do in... in well, I'm a bit bigger. Do you know what Games Workshop are planning to use instead of the individual source books since they're getting rid of them? No. Not a clue. No idea. 
Midnight Games Workshop. Do you think it's worth abusing the rule that Mirkwood Rangers led by Mirkwood Heroes and Captains don't count towards the bow limit? It's not abusing the rule. That is bliss. It's, you're using the rule. You're using it. It's not, an, it's not an abuse. You're paying for it. Yeah. They're expensive. How can I make an armoured Glorfindel model? A lot of people cut off the head of a twin and do a head swap. <laughs> so brutal, but yeah, you can cut off the head of a twin, do a head swap. That's, that's the best way. Um, according to yeah. a lot of people. And are Eastland Black Dragons good enough for competitive play? Yeah. Fight for and courage for. Makes them... Which brings them into that level, you know. Fight for is the one that you needed. Very, very important. And um, thanks, guys, and great job opening a gym, James. Thank you very much. Been hard work. Uh, Tom Harrison did quite well with these links, didn't he? Nah. He did. Nah, I smashed him twice. Yeah, but that was, <laughs> he was really unlucky yeah. to sort of do so well to play you twice. He'd yeah. have been better off. He'd been better off not doing as well early yeah. on and then winning all his games, Jumping. playing you in the last game. Yeah. Just drawing a game and then yeah. that would have been better for him. Uh, next up, we've got Ian Marley's for LOL Scum Cheese. I like that word or two words, made me giggle. Yeah, that's my word for Lewis. Yeah. Lewis Scum Cheese. Lewis Scum Cheese. Lewis Scum Cheese. It sounds dirty. Yeah. Bad, bad man. Uh, I, like, I like the way on the face where you tried to blame oh, I, I, Ash. Yeah. It wasn't my fault that we Wait, cheated. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well done, Ian Marley, for pointing out. I mean, it was his first tournament, so yeah. I hope that that hasn't ruined your perspective of what. Well, as you said, there, there was never heard of that happening. Other, other, other armies there that were illegal as well, so which um, shouldn't really happen, and I've never seen that ever happen before, yeah. ever. Um, which is your favourite named ring wraith, and why? Keep up the good work. I would also, like many here, pay a subscription. Uh, Silmaril member. Oh, yeah, myth. We got myth drill. Silmaril. God, these guys are good. Yeah. Better than us. <laughs> Better than you. Better than me, yeah. I'm pretty useless at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so favourite ring wraith, name ring wraith, and why? I really like the Knight of Umbar for the look, and the Dark Marshal for the look, and probably, you know, I've not really played with ring wraiths, but... Yeah. Favourite name? Knight of Umbar, I'm going to go for a combination of all factors, looks, all round. Yeah. Um, I, goodness. I still have a soft spot for the Shadow Lord, despite him being really not worth it nowadays. I still think he's a good wraith and can really do over your surely, surely he is worth it in the right kind of army. Oh, yeah. yeah, Just, yeah. You know, let's say, for example, you've got Corsair Reavers. Yeah, Hydra Claws. He's worth it. No good shot to pieces yeah. before you get there. Yeah. Good. I still have a soft spot. Yeah. Me. <laughs> no one shoot my guys. <laughs> I just keep thinking he's like a log flume or something. <laughs> Whee! Ah! <laughs> the now school screen. The now school screen. Uh, yeah, good to hear from you, Ian, and look forward to meeting you at Stockport 2.0. And finally, our final question. Mr. Camille Domanski. Hi, guys. Great bit as always. My last night's force is finished. I've got... Two questions. Two questions about it. Who's better, Elendil or Isildur? Uh, and uh, or Elendil or Isildur, Isildur and extra warriors. With the changes to the ring, I'm going to say Elendil's now better. The fact that he can't pass through other troops make Isildur a little bit worse than he was. Okay. Um, Elendil free heroic combat in each turn is awesome. Yeah. That is pretty cool. And in being fight seven. Fight seven. I mean, I know you've got the ring with your sealed though, but then you risk him becoming evil and getting pulled in a way you don't want him to. Yeah. He'd rather sort of have the the constant. Constant beating everyone rather than. Yeah, not relying on charm. Yeah. Well, I know that it's a dice game, you rely on charms, but you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gilglad with shield or without? Oh, with. With. Defense 8. That's what you want. Is Defense 8 or Defense 9? I think it's Defense 8. Defense 8, I think. Uh, thanks, and as always. You'll never walk alone. Before you put in some snide comment about something else. Have you seen the United kit for next season? No, I've seen the full third kit. Oh, it's horrible. It's awful. The United home kit's awful. Really? It looks like. Have you seen, um, remember, the only day in the village? Oh, yeah. The red thing with the cross, because we're sponsored by Chevrolet. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 it 
looks just like it. Oh, look like a little gold cross in the middle. Oh. <laughs> it looks, you know. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah, some players might get away with watching it, uh, wearing it because, of course, you know, the fit guys. But, you know, you, you get your average fan wearing one yeah, of those. He yeah. buys a top too small for him. He'd be the, you know. Or he, he has a few too many pints and blokes into it. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's <laughs> not, it's not going to be a good look. Not a fan of that kit. Our, our away kit, the black one. No, it's the yeah, black one. It's the stripes. No, the that's, 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 that's the third kit. Yeah, it's awful. It's, oh, it's a, uh, we, we've, we've got our contract with Warrior to make the third kit and it's just every time it's been horrible like last season it was horrible this season it's even worse and like contractually obliged to wear it at least three times yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous <laughs> doing the friendlies getting out of the way yeah 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 getting out of the way uh, that is our speak friend question Dan yeah unbelievably so we've got lots of content to try and film it's mm. half past three so probably get a couple of our companies in there yeah, yeah. let's fill up on our content content should we okay. do our Unboxing yeah. sister. That's what we're going to go and do for you guys now. Make sure, as always, that you comment, like, share, and subscribe. Support your hobby, hobby, and happy strategy. Battle game.